your what's up people welcome back how are you pretty good thank you so welcome back to the continuation of this little pre-production series i have going on hopefully you enjoyed last week's video the introduction to what pre-production looks like as a cinematographer this week we're going to be talking about specifically location scouting and tech scouting now, right off the bat, I just want to say that location scouting and tech scouting are technically two different things, but a lot of the times you can kind of combine them into one day. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times when you're brought onto a project, you don't always have the luxury of getting to go around, drive around, find different locations. Like you might hear in like a big podcast, like DP's like, I was driving with the director and we just spotted something over there. Like it doesn't really happen like that all the time, at least in my experience. But in my experience, whenever I go on a location scout, it's also combined with a tech scout. So there are certain people that are involved on a location tech scout. Usually it is me, the DP, director, producers, first AD, and key crew members. So key grip, gaffer, and anyone else that is really involved, production designer might be there. So there is a good amount of people that attend a scout. So I just wanted to get that out of the way up front because some of you might be confused, like what is location, what is a tech scout? Location scout is just essentially looking at different locations to see which might fit the right vibe for the project and logistically if this will work for the commercial or film that you're shooting. Tech scout is more on the technical side, what gear is needed to accomplish here? Uh, what kind of lighting do we need here? What type of grip gear do we need here? So the tech scout is more on the technical side to be able to accomplish the actual project. So we're gonna be kind of talking about both of those simultaneously as it's one scout. So keep that in mind as we go through today's video. So before we jump into today's topic, a little housekeeping. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is something that I haven't brought up on this channel yet and uh, I figured now would be a better time than ever. Um, I'm really curious to hear your guys' opinions. So please comment below your thoughts. I really actually need your input. So as you know, a lot of filmmakers are creating online courses. And this is something that has piqued my interest and I'm not entirely sure it's what I wanna do though. But at the same time, I still love teaching and I love being able to help people out, especially those who are interested in cinematography. So what I thought about doing, which is a bit more unique, is creating a live workshop. And to start, obviously it would be close to home for me in Philadelphia. So I'm curious to know, would any of you guys be interested in attending some sort of live workshop, live event with me? And it wouldn't be just me talking, essentially. I would be bringing on a, an amazing gaffer, amazing key grip, first AC, because as a DP, you're not doing all of these jobs. So I felt like it'd be really important to bring on people that are specialized in their field to talk about their specific job. And essentially a quick overview of the workshop would be pretty much a day on set. We would find a great location. Everyone would arrive on location at, I don't know, early in the morning and be there for a 10 hour day. Like we would be on set and go through a bunch of different topics, a bunch of different scenes and essentially just talk about what a day would be like on a commercial, for example. And you would hear talks from me, the gaffer, key grip, AC. You would learn how to build a camera from the AC. You would learn how to set up monitors, wireless feeds. For the gaffer, they would talk about lighting techniques, why we would choose this lighting. Um, key grip would talk about safety, um, rigging, stands, and all the different things that go on in the gripping world. I'm also working with a lot of brands that are interested in this workshop to be able to provide some gear for everyone who attends. So I'm doing a bunch of work on it now and I essentially just need to know like, is this something that people are gonna be interested in? So let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, I appreciate your guys' feedback, positive or negative. So next thing real quick I wanna talk about is this shirt right here, eastwavesco.com. My buddy Tomas started a clothing company, East Waves. And uh, yeah, I'm wearing their shirt. I wear their shirts all the time. Extremely comfortable, they got really cool designs, and yeah, just go support a local business. If you're interested, link is in the description. Use Carlo at checkout for a quick little discount. Now let's talk about location and tech scouting. So like I mentioned before, there are a lot of key players that attend a location tech scout. Now, on an average location scout, depending on the location, the scale, and the scope of the project, it can vary between a couple hours throughout your day, or it can last an entire day. Um, so you're essentially going throughout the day of that commercial on the location scout. The goal of the location scout is to be able to walk around the area, scope out the location, see what are the best angles of the location, where can you shoot, where can you not shoot, 
Logistically, is this an easy access place to get to? Can you get gear in it easily? Is there parking? Where is the sun located in relative to the location that we're shooting? Do we need to add a lot of production design or is the location doing most of the work? It's also important to find out what the limitations of the location are. Are you allowed to use haze or are you not allowed to use haze? Are you allowed to put stands on the floor or are you not allowed to put stands on the floor? There are so many different things that go on in a location scout for you to actually determine if this is a great location. And there have been plenty of times where we walk into a space and be like, wow, this is perfect. But after talking to the location manager and realizing that you can't use haze, they don't allow stands on the floor, you can't put a light out, you can't do, like understanding the limitations that the location presents you really can allow and inform your decision making to determine if this is the proper location or not. And sometimes emotion can get in the way because you think this is the perfect spot. But logistically, financially, and practically, it is not the best spot for everybody. So then you have to adjust and get out of your emotional state and move on to a spot that is better for everybody and still works for the creative. So here are a couple things that I, as a DP, look for on a location scout. Number one, does this location fit the vibe of the commercial or film that you're shooting? Two, find the spots or angles where you want the camera to face. Things to consider here, what does the background look like? If you're facing the camera in this direction, what does the background look like? Another important factor, especially when you start to find your compositions and frames, is where is the sun located relative to that composition or angle? For those curious about what app I use to track the sun, the app is called Sunseeker. So this app helps track the sun where it is at a given hour, also what day it is and what month that you're going to be shooting at. So when you find your composition or angle, regardless of your inside or outside, if there are windows involved and there's a lot of natural light happening or you're outside where you're dealing with all natural light, it's really important to understand where the sun is going to be at what time of day. Understanding this will greatly help you be able to determine when you should be shooting this particular scene and when you should not be shooting this scene. Also, remember that the sun does not stay in the same spot all day long. It changes minute by minute, hour by hour. So when you are talking with the first AD and producer about scheduling, keep in mind that you, wanted to, you want to be able to put the production in the best position by understanding where the sun is going to be and utilizing the sun to maximize the shots that you have maximize the time that you have within that time frame of where the sun is going to be because if you choose wrong or you don't understand the positioning of the sun you are greatly going to affect the schedule you're greatly going to affect what kind of gear and equipment is needed to actually make something look good so definitely number one thing for me is to know where the sun is at what time given the angle and composition that we're shooting at a particular scene. Next thing is what does the framing look like? For those wondering what app I use for framing, I use an app called Artemis Pro. And this is such an amazing tool for cinematographers because you get to choose the camera body that you're using and lens choice that you're using. You could also change the different aspect ratios. So it's a really great tool to actually get an accurate representation of what your frame is going to look like. By taking reference images, you are really able to envision the spot right in front of you on your phone. By looking at each of the different frames that you take on the location scout, and then exporting it into one complete PDF, you essentially get to see the entire spot right in front of you frame by frame. And it's also important to share these frames with key people like the director, the gaffer, key grip, production designer, anyone that really needs to know what the frames are gonna look like. It's important to share these frames with them so they get an idea of what to expect on production day. So when on a location scout, obviously I'm talking with the director a ton about the creative side and what we're able to actually do and what he or she is thinking about, but it's important as a DP to communicate with your gaffer and key grip on a location scout. So first I'm going to be talking about what some of the discussions look like with my gaffer on a location scout. A lot of the conversations are about what we're trying to go for emotionally, tonality wise, quality of light wise, where the angles are, where the sun is going to be, what type of lighting we are essentially going for for this commercial or film. Overall, talking with the gaffer is really important because they're gonna be able to give you a great lighting plan based on the conversation that you have with them. As I'm walking through the scene with my gaffer on the location scout, I'm envisioning that scene in my head and I'm able to determine like, okay, I want 
I want a lot of the soft light coming from this side here. I need a little bit of an edge back there. I want to make sure that I have a hair light ready. Um, I want to make sure that I have something in case we need more of an eye light. Um, definitely neg this back wall because I, I don't want any natural light coming. These are just examples of way that I might communicate. And at that same time, the gaffer is usually taking notes per scene to determine what fixtures and what is needed at every single scene throughout the entire spot that we're at that location. So by the time the location scout ends, my gaffer has a great understanding of what equipment is actually needed to accomplish this project. So by the time I'm able to present an equipment list to the producer, I feel confident that the gaffer understands what we're looking to get accomplished. So by the time they present me with an equipment list and ideas that they're thinking, I'm able to communicate back to them be like, okay, I think we are solid here. Or maybe can we just add one thing, maybe swap one thing here or there. But a lot of the times, I like to let my gaffers pick the fixtures that they think are the best tool for the job. And then once they present all of that to me, we talk about it and then I present that to the producer. Next is discussions with the key grip on a location scout. So a lot of the times the key grip is there for safety and precautionary reasons. Key grip is the person that essentially deals with the stands, flags, rags, frames. They're also the ones that deal with where the camera is going to be moving. They're involved with the safety of camera movement and also just general safety on set. So having a key grip on a location scout is extremely important to understand the limitations of what you're looking to get accomplished relative to the location and what the limitations of the location are. A key grip can say, love your idea here. We aren't able to actually do that because of the limitation at the location here, but here's an alternative to still get you what you want, but in a safer way. You'll also notice that throughout a location scout, the gaffer and key grip are talking amongst themselves a lot. Because the gaffer has ideas on how they want to light things, they'll be communicating with the key grip on what's possible and what's not possible. So by the time the location scout ends, after talking with the gaffer and key grip, I'm also able to understand how much crew is needed for this job. For example, if we need to black out 15 windows and I only tell production we need one grip, that's gonna set us up for failure immediately because that one grip, it's gonna take them five hours to black out all of these big windows. But after the location scout, after talking with the key grip, and as in talking to them about, hey, we need to black out all these windows, how many people do you think we need to feel comfortable and get this done in a quick amount of time? They will be able to give me an answer on how many people they think would be the proper amount. So when I go to the producer, I'm able to tell them we need this many people on the grip side, we need this many people on the electric side, and they will be able to tell me, yes, we can afford that, no, we can't afford that, and then how can we adjust from there? But being able to present them with a certain number of people, also a great equipment list that we all feel confident in, will be able to better prepare us when having a conversation with the producer about what is actually needed to accomplish the look of this project. So the next thing, and this is something that a lot of the producers will notice, and it's not necessarily this is the first thing in my mind, but it is something to consider greatly. When you're at a location scout, it's important to understand what the load in looks like. For example, I've done plenty of work in New York City where we've had an hour to load in and set up, but I didn't have a location scout and the location is on the 10th floor with a skinny elevator and I need to take 15 trips up to get all of the equipment up and that takes up more than two hours. So you're already behind in the production because there wasn't an allotted amount of time given what the load in looks like and parking, for example. So being able to look at, okay, everyone has parking here or no, we need to find parking for everybody. That's going to add time. Load in looks like it might take an hour and a half because there's a small elevator or we need to take the stairs or load in is you have access to this the night before or something along those lines, but understanding what the load in looks like can greatly determine what your schedule should look like. And for me, when I'm talking about scheduling and helping create the schedule, I'm a huge proponent of adding at least a half hour to 45 minutes of buffer time in the morning to allow for anything wrong to happen and for us to have a little bit of a safety net. So if I'm presented with, hey, can we have an hour for load-in and setup, I will usually pitch and propose that, hey, can we have an hour and a half to an hour 45 for these reasons? And a lot of the times producers will agree to that because the way that I pitch it is give us a little bit more time in the morning to get the kinks out so that we can actually be ready to go and be speedy the rest of the day. 
And in my mind, I know that it is going to take an hour to set up, but the fact that we have an hour and a half, an hour 45, gives us that extra little window. And if we can accomplish it and be done in an hour, we have that 45 minutes allotted for us, right, like already done, so we can start early, we can start rehearsing and get the day moving quicker and producers and ADs are going to love that. So something to consider when scheduling as a cinematographer is think about adding a buffer window in the beginning of your day to get all of the kinks out. So that's a quick list of a lot of the things that I think about and people that I talk to on a location and tech scout. So obviously I didn't really talk too much about what the discussions are like with me and the director, but as you can probably understand, it's a lot about the creative, it's a lot about what we're envisioning, but really the most important is talking with your key people, producers, about what is actually feasible in this location. And that is really, really important because you could talk about all the creative ideas you want. You could talk about biggest things in the world with the director because that's essentially what you're, that's the, you know, when you're talking with the director, you're talking about creative ideas. Like how can you make this the best thing possible? But your job as a cinematographer is to understand the capabilities of everyone around you, understand the limitations, and be able to present everybody with the proper formula to get this accomplished in the best way possible at the highest level. And by doing that, you need to focus on logistics, focus on the practicality of everything, and focus on what is actually possible. So those are all really important things. And as you could probably tell, a location of Tech Scout is extremely important in the success of a project. Now, I know a lot of the times that you aren't able to get on a location scout or a Tech Scout, but is someone able to get there? Can you get pictures from that person? Can you get a 360 video? Anything to help determine what that location looks like and what the outside looks like. What does the parking look like? Even if you're not on a scout, these are questions that you always should be asking. What does load in look like? Is there parking for crew? Do we need to take an elevator? Just to be able to get that information in your head is going to set you up for success to better determine what that schedule is going to look like. And as I mentioned in last week's video, as you could probably tell now and how important a location scout is in understanding the limitations it might present, if I were in conversation with the director prior to location scout and they wanna have a big crane and a 30 foot swooping thing and I'm like, yeah, let's do that 100%, I can do that, no problem at all, like that's easy. And then we get to the location, it's like, that's not possible at all, 0% possible. You then have to tell the director and producer that this thing is just not gonna happen. And even though that does happen often and you have to be able to provide another solution, you just never wanna promise anything prior to understanding the limitations of the location. So that's it for today's episode on location scouting. Hopefully you found some useful tips in here. Hopefully you found it to be beneficial. So stay tuned for another week of pre-production for cinematographers, where next week we're gonna be talking about budgeting and equipment sourcing. If you found this video to be beneficial, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. And again, just wanna mention, if you haven't commented on the beginning part of this video where I talk about the potential workshop, definitely let me know again in the comments if you think that this is something that is worth doing. But besides that, have a great day everyone. I'll see you next time. Peace out.